Okay, so I want to just show how I use Google Sheets to take notes for my tutoring students. And I do a very similar thing for my group students. And I find it very flexible and I can adjust a template or each sheet depending on the need for that student. Okay, so uh, in Google Sheets, I make a tutoring notes and this one I will share this once I just show it to you and I only have uh, the student's name and then across the top here each column represents a different item that I would take notes on and it'd be like the different headings I would have on my page notes but I've made them columns and then each row is a date and the advantage I have here is that where I would have have to flip page by page by page to look at one aspect over time. Here, I can just look down, and I just copied a small portion of this to show you, but I would just look down to see what's happened over time. So my, I would have the dates here, and um, I have a visual, so I might put a note in my, for my visual drill what the student had any issue with. I would check that I did an auditory drill or any uh, issues we may have had. I'd check what we've done for blending as a blending drill, CVC, CVCCs, R controls, whatever. So my own little notes about what I covered for that, uh, what rules that we had to reinforce, and if we were working on any reference pages for a reference, then I would. Uh, for this student, this was a, this is an older student who had trouble with confusing words um, so i might make a note of you know that we had practiced the there there there's or the two two twos or whatever um, confusing words and i could check over time i didn't actually copy a section where i had any but i would check over time how frequently we had reviewed it or asked for recall because we know that recall promotes long-term memory. So I just check through and say, okay, it's been two weeks since we've done any recall on this. Let's do that again. And then I can go through and say, oh, it's been, you know, two weeks or three weeks since we've done any review or recall on this aspect. And I would pull that back in. So this allows me to see it quickly over time, what we've done. And uh, for this student, I would have, uh, root reviews and doing the same thing. So we're learning morphology and we would, I would mention what roots we've been working on and look over time what we need to review or recall again. Uh, I would have, this one also had some new work on syllabication. She just needed to feel better about herself. So I taught her very quickly how to syllabicate longer words, even though she was still blending with uh, CBCCs and CCBCCs, it gave her um, a boost to see that she could syllabicate monosodium glutamate or accommodations or whatever words that had come up in something that either she had at school or something that we looked at. And so she practiced her syllabication skills on these long words and then she felt really good about herself. So I would keep notes on what she'd been doing. And I would keep notes on our phonemic awareness drills, what level she's on, what troubles she's had. And later on, I started using ReadWorks articles and I would write in the name of the article and the paragraph that she read and any games that we played so that I kept record of not doing the same game too many days in a row or the same type of game. Um, so I would make a note here. And then any other notes that I had uh, for the student and uh, anything that I wanted to make sure that I uh, looked at over time I would either highlight or I would uh, might go in and take the note and uh, you know put that one part in red or something so I could see that that was something I had to look back at there was um, there was one student I had that for days, I would have a note across the top, do not give remote control. So I never 
forgot and gave remote control to that student again. So whatever I want to make sure I notice, I put in red. And then spelling words. And sometimes I would put in um, a picture of something my student had done. Or I could put in a link to an assessment. So if we'd done any assessments or any um, work outside of uh, the spelling words, whatnot, I would put a link to it. So if something that were living in my Google Drive, I'd link it here. So um, that's just very quickly how I would use this. And I customize this depending on the student. So some of my students, depending on the school that they go to, they have to study their spelling words, their wonders words, or whatever spelling words. So I would make a column and show what words we were in person for spelling or for vocabulary, if some of them were, uh, whatever the various uh, vocabulary programs were, and I would make a column for that and I would include those words in our study. Um, and uh, if, you know, when the student is doing dictation, I, if I have the student do the dictation in a, a doc or in a slide or in whatever it is, I might just copy that dictation and pop it in here so I have record of it, uh, uh, what the student has done. Anyway, so what I do is I have a template here with my columns and I can change the columns and I go in and I just start, start here and I start down a few rows and then, uh, you know, the first time I see a student, I'm gonna have more notes, uh, some assessments and data and I'll take longer notes. And then each day I will come in on the line above. Each session would be the line above. And then every time I do a new session, I just come in here and right click and then insert a row above. So I then put my new day above that. And then when I'm lesson planning, so after I've written my notes, or I might lesson plan a couple of days, I'll put in a couple of new days here and I will come in and say, you know, this is my plan. We're going to introduce this graphene here on the, on the planned day. Or we're going to do uh, planning to work on this reference page on the planned day. And if it happens, it's there. And if it doesn't happen, I just remove it and put it into a new day. Um, so I plan going forward and I have notes of what's been done. The other thing I have here on this file is I have my cheat sheet of phoneme graphene uh, correspondence chart. And when I'm doing, let me go back here to show you in the sample. When I'm doing an auditory drill, I have indicated whatever graphemes uh, my student had any difficulty with in the visual drill. So I make sure that I pull all of those sounds of whatever the student has already learned in the auditory drill. So if this day the student didn't remember the EA, says E A. Uh, a. And so on my auditory drill, I would you know, ask for the E sound and find the spellings of the E and the E uh, and the A sounds and check that the student was able to recall the spellings for each sound here. And I would do that here. And as a cheat sheet, I might refer back here and I have all of my phonemes, all the sound represented. So this is E is in me and, you know, uh, the U is in up and whatnot, all the way down here. And I have a cheat sheet of, do they, rem do they remember this spelling of the sounds? And then what I do is, I've covered that and we're still within the time I generally allot. I will do one whole column of checking for the auditory drill. And then the next time I'll do column two, then column three and column four. So that over a course of time, I made sure that I have reviewed each of the uh, 44 sounds, or at least the spellings for those sounds that the student has already learned. So I'm not forgetting to review or get recall on any of these sounds. So it's my cheat sheet here. So I keep that here and then I record that in my template. All right, so um, 
I will link the uh, a copy of this in with the video.